Uh, please welcome our speaker today, Abhiksa Mishra, who is a software engineer at JP Morgan and uh, has over a decade of experience in uh, different industries. Uh, and uh, she's going to teach us today the basics about data structures. Thank you. Oh, no, I forgot. I promise to not forget. Abhiksa has been a member of Women Who Got London community for four years. Thank you. Yay, uh, thank you. Thank, thanks, Helen. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'll just take a minute to share my screen. Let me know if everyone is able to see my screen. Uh, if... All good. Yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, hi. Thanks for the introduction, Helen. So let's begin the session. Uh, this will be a very basic data structures with algorithms kind of introduction uh, session. Um, so let's start. Okay. Firstly, why data structures? What are they? So when you think of computer science, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is data. Everything revolves around data. And especially in today's world where you see so many networks and everything is basically just uh, bundles of data. So data structures are kind of a format for organizing, processing, storing all of these data. These are the building blocks of anything uh, that we try to do in programming or computer science. And you could have various types of data structures uh, some of the data structures are very specifically designed to meet a required uh, purpose or functionality. Uh, let's go through the types of data structures. This is a very um, basic breakdown that I have uh, put in here uh, for the types of data structures. Now you have different primitive data structures which are inbuilt with a programming language. Uh, you could have uh, non-primitive data structures, which are kind of the more extensive data structures, which constitute the building blocks of a complex algorithm or a complex uh, program that uh, we are writing. So as we go through, uh, I'll take you through the basics of the mostly the non-primitive data structures, because that would be the um, main thing that we are going to cover in this session and also in the uh, further sessions. So the primitive types are specifically like uh, things like the data types that are built into the language. So integer, characters, Boolean, and other data type, um, which are simple to choose and uh, based on the data, the programming language defines how to use them. The non-primitive data structures, they work on larger groups of data when you have to arrange a bigger group of data, when you have to work around more complex algorithms, we would go ahead and use non-primitive kind of data structures like arrays, strings, linked list, queues, stack. Uh, those are some of the linear kind of data structures and you have more complicated non-linear structures like trees, graphs, and hash table as well. Um, let's deep dive into uh, some of the basics beginning with an array. Um, before that, yes, um, the majority of the data structures operations will uh, revolve around these four things. How do you insert something into a data structure? How do you delete something from the structure? How do you traverse through the elements in the structure? And how do you sort the elements in the structure? Now, as we go on through the course and as we deep dive into the individual data structures, we will be covering various uh, different kinds of algorithms that are specifically suited for some of these purposes. And we will also know what is the difference between all of these uh, operations in the different data structures. 
uh, we'll try to keep it at a very basic level for today so we all have an idea of how these look like in the different structures that we have. Array uh, by far is one of the most uh, simplest data structures. It is an index based structure and it stores the data in uh, the index locations. Because of the index uh, that it has, it provides kind of really easy access to the data that is being stored. Um, if you look at the um, picture here, the image that um, I have shared, um, the array consists of, as you can see, there are integer values. 4, 5, 1, 3, and 9. Uh, and how do we access them is by uh, array 0, uh, the first element. So it's the indexes start from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. So basically, if you have five elements in the array, you would have indexes from 0 to 4. And your first element is at index 0. So array 0 is nothing but 4 here. Um, inserting in an array looks something like this. So uh, because uh, the array will have uh, look at, will have uh, in, uh, data at very specific locations, let's say you want to uh, insert something at a very specific location, let's say at index five. So you would have to essentially uh, play around and move the other elements in order to make some space for that particular element that you want to insert. Um, unless otherwise, we would try to always insert things in bulk in the array, but there will be very specific cases where, okay, you have some uh, specific requirement where you want to insert at index, let's say, two and three or any other position. In that case, we would have to write our structure or array around um, building things in a way so that it shifts the index and shifts the data at uh, multiple indexes and then inserts the element at a very specific index. Um, this is kind of a very uh, basic Python snippet uh, around array, uh, which says that array has, um, it defines the elements in the array, that is 10, 20, 2 to 50. As you can see, there are like five elements and it has uh, four. So the indexes will be actually from zero to four. So I have defined my array as array one equals to array uh, and access it by I. And uh, I have the elements. When you print it, um, let's say I want to print the first element, I would use something like print array one zero. So that's the index. The second part is the index. Uh, similarly, printing um, element number uh, three, that is 30, I would use the index of two. So array one, two will give you 30 here. Um, okay, so searching and sorting in an array uh, can be done via different kinds of algorithms. Now we have something called linear search. We have something called binary search. Linear search is um, a simple linear traversal of the array. Binary search is an algorithm which we will be covering when we uh, deep dive into the array and look through how both of them are quite different from each other. Uh, we have various sorting algorithms for uh, arrays as well, like pick sort, merge sort, insertion, bubble sort, uh, etc. Um, the most, one of the most commonly used search is binary search, which kinds of which kind of deals with dividing the array and then searching through each uh, half of the array. And one of the most commonly used sorting algorithm is quick sort. And uh, by experience, these two things are um, very frequently used and also uh, make for really good interview questions. So if you are kind of preparing or if you are uh, focusing on arrays, then 
you would want to uh, go through or revisit all of these, which we will also be covering in uh, the session where we deep dive on arrays and the corresponding sorting and searching algorithms. So I'll take a quick pause here and uh, uh, Helen, if you can see if we have any questions in the chat, because I'm not able to look at the chat currently. Yeah, uh, can you please uh, uh, click back uh, to this code sample that you had? Uh, yeah, so next. Uh, I means that it's an integer array, array of integers. But basically in Python, you could have just uh, go away with uh, just whatever is in the square brackets. So like 10 to 15. Uh, it's, it's not needed to put an I there. Okay, so do we have any uh, questions or anything from anyone? Or I can just proceed over. No more questions at the moment. Uh, okay, okay, so let's proceed to um, stack. Uh, now stack is a dynamic data structure which means that it can quite uh, grow in size. Um, it's um, last in a LIFO data structure, which is uh, a last in first out uh, kind of data structure, which means that um, the last element that we store in a stack will be the first element that can be accessed um, in the uh, stack. So it quite works like, uh, you could consider it like a pile of plates, um, um, a stack could be like that, and you can only read uh, from the top of the stack. So as you can see here, the arrows are pointing to the top of the stack. So I keep on incrementing, like adding my elements there. And as I go on, the element that I read first will be the element that I have actually added in the uh, end. Um, this is um, this is a an image showing uh, the common operations in a stack. So it says that I have these five elements that I'm trying to put in the stack. So the top of the stack in the first uh, uh, picture is denoted by five. So that is my latest element in the stack. Let's say I push six into the stack. So now six will become the top of the stack. And when I try to read it uh, by operations uh, like peak and pop, uh, so the difference between peak and pop is that in peak operation, you can just read the element and it does not actually delete the element from the stack. But when you pop from a stack, it is actually going to delete that particular element from the stack as well. So when I push in six, that becomes the top. And when I read uh, the top uh, using peak, I get a six. And when I'm trying to delete it via uh, using pop, my top is now pointing to five and so on. Um, and it'll go like that. So that is um, the basic stack operations and how it, uh, just to give you an idea on how that would work. Uh, this is a uh, example snippet again in Python and uh, for stack, which has like operations like push, as you can see, uh, which appends the data, pop, which is removing the data, and is empty, well, is empty is an operation on stack that would tell you if the stack is uh, empty or, or not, whether it has any items or not. Um, so a very common example of why uh, we would want to check that is, let's say you are trying to pop an element from a stack, but the stack is already empty. So that would kind of throw an exception. So it's always, uh, it's a good practice to check uh, whether the stack is empty or not before popping an element 
from it or before deleting an element from it. So that's an example snippet. And this shows how you can uh, go, like how you can put the operations done in a stack. Let's say I initialize the stack and then I add in uh, a stack.add Monday and a stack.add Tuesday. Now, when I do a pop, uh, that would actually uh, print Tuesday. Uh, I add in Wednesday and Thursday. And again, when I do a peak, that would uh, print Thursday. So, so yeah, this is an operation, uh, example operation on stack. Moving on, um, moving on to a queue. Uh, so Q again is a dynamic data structure, but the, how it differs from a stack is that it is a FIFO data structure. So a FIFO data structure means on uh, the first one to be actually stored in the queue will be the first one to be accessed in the queue. Um, so you could think of Q uh, working very similar to a regular queue of people at a movie theater or something where the first one in the line will be the first one that will actually enter in the, into the uh, show the ticket and enter into the theater and uh, leave the queue. So you insert things at the end, uh, but you can read from the front and things can also be removed from the front. Uh, that's one way that it actually uh, differs from the stack. So uh, to give you an idea on this, this is a image showing, uh, again, a list of five items that we are trying to insert and read from into a queue. So we try to end queue. When we end queue, so end queue is the, op is the process of adding items to a queue. And DQ is the process of actually deleting items uh, from a queue. So when you are enqueuing items into the queue, as you can see here, um, one, two, three, four, five, and six, so they are just uh, added one after the other uh, in the order that they are coming in here. So six here is actually uh, forming the back of the queue and one which was added initially, that forms the front of the queue. And when I will, DQ an item from the queue, my front uh, gets to point to two. So one has been DQ. So accordingly, you can read the items in order uh, that they were actually added on to the queue. Um, again, a sample uh, code for queue. Um, uh, it has the regular insert operations where it, you can add an item to the queue and a uh, length of the queue, that could be another uh, operation. And uh, yeah, and let's say you add like three items to the queue here, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you want to print the size of the queue, that would print uh, three here. Um, so yeah, that's a very, very simple example on the queue. Um, this, this, this picture essentially just shows how uh, stack, the difference between a stack and a queue, which we have seen that they both differ in the way, uh, essentially that stack is a LIPO kind of data structure and queue is a FIFO kind of data structure. Um, yeah, so that is the difference between a stack and a queue. Do we have like any questions at this point or can we move on? I, do I see anything? I don't actually see the chat here. So I don't know if anyone has any question or if someone wants to just unmute and ask, please feel free to ask. I'm trying to answer questions as they go in the chat, but if anyone has questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask it directly. Can I ask, maybe a, a bit of a, a simple question, but stacks and queues, I, I program not a huge amount, but I program as part of my job. And I don't 
think I use them much. Like in which I use, I use dictionaries a lot. I use lists a lot, arrays a lot. But in, in which contexts uh, context, uh, are stacks and queues really useful? Uh, so uh, that's a good question. And yes, I mean, um, stacks and queues are very specifically uh, used for contexts like well, let's say, um, well, we will know that further down uh, as we go here from uh, here in this presentation, but a very um, common like application would be kind of um, a traversal, traversal down a tree or a graph. Uh, we do use kind of stacks to um, store it and traverse the various nodes in that. That could be one example again, but that is a very data structure specific example. Um, uh, Irina, Chimika, do you have any more examples? Yeah, yeah. The queue is very popular, for example, for task scheduler. So if you have some tasks and you need to process it uh, at the time, you just, uh, for example, give priority for the task and put it in the queue. And your service that uh, execute this task, uh, get it from this queue. It's like the most popular example. Yep. And uh, yeah, I mean, just to add to that, that is a very uh, important part in your, uh, that plays a very important role in the operating system task scheduling as well. So you have like, um, uh, if you would have heard of different processes like uh, LFU caches, like LR and LRU caches, like least recently used cache and everything like that. So basically internally how they would work is by using all of these data structures in addition with like there are different combinations of structures that we use to represent them. So they are very internal to operating system uh, scheduling, if that helps to answer. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, okay, I think, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, so linked list, uh, now linked list is a node-based data structure. So how a linked list is represented is by a series of nodes that are connected by links. And those links are nothing but pointers and a node essentially, as, as you can see in the picture, a node consists of uh, two parts, one is a data and one is a pointer to another node. So these are kind of a sequence of nodes connected by links. That is what a linked list is. It has a head uh, which points to my uh, beginning node and um, the last node in the list would essentially point to null, so basically there is no node at the, that denotes that it is the end of the list. So that is what a linked list is and how it looks like. Now, uh, this, uh, this image is to depict like the basic operations again on a linked list. Uh, you have a head and you have a tail which is drawing. Uh, when you add items, uh, when you add items, the uh, this one is, this one specifically shows that okay the tail is growing, so uh, you keep on adding items at the tail, and when you can also remove items, you would have to adjust the pointers. Now the thing with linked list is that you can actually also add items at any point in the linked list, because um, you just need to make a change in the pointer uh to the next node that it is pointing now my example here shows that okay you can add keep on adding x y z towards the end of the list let's say i want to add x at uh position number three for example after a and b so i would i can do that but what i need to also do is to change the pointer of b to point to uh x and change the pointer of X to actually point to C. So that is an adjustment that my linked list will uh, do when I'm adding nodes at other positions and not only at the end position. So linked list would have add, pop, 
uh, remove the usual operations and um, how does this look like is okay so this is a very um, basic uh, link list uh, where I am uh, trying to print uh, the items in a link list. So uh, when I print the items, uh, okay, is this the, okay. uh, I think the first part of this, so let's consider that my link list is actually has items of Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So this particular list, which is printing the list, um, what it does is it traverses uh, the list until it has a next pointer. It will print the data value in the list and then it uh, it will point the pointer to the next element in the list. So that is what uh, is conveyed in the while loop. And yeah, this is printing the elements in the list. So that's Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at the end. Um, yep, that is about a uh, linked list. Um, uh, the difference between a linked list and an array now, both are, um, both represent um, kind of a list of elements that you can store. Uh, however, one difference is in the way they store, uh, the way that you can access the elements in array and linked list. In an array, the access that you that is provided is uh, very easy because you have just have the indexes. So you can just check at each index if the element is there. However, in linked list, you would have to really traverse all the nodes until you actually find what data is there in that particular node. So that is one uh, difference in the way that we can access that. Um, then arrays hold uh, data in continuous blocks of memory, but linked list, uh, you just need a pointer to the next node. So it, it's not necessary that they are stored uh, in contiguous blocks. They could be stored across different memory address, but you just need a pointer. Uh, they just need to be connected by pointers for us in order to know that, okay, this is the contents of that entire linked list. So um, yeah, that those are some of the differences between a linked list and an array. Um, this is kind of a very uh, fundamental uh, uh, question that might get asked. Um, yeah, and also helps you decide like if you have a particular problem and it also helps you decide what could be a better data structure to use. Could it be a linked list or could it be an array? So let's say I, my main requirement is I need to access the elements really fast. I would want to use an array and not a linked list. But let's say I want to, um, for example, my data structure would want um, many different insertions and deletions, then probably a linked list would be better because you can actually um, just change the pointers to the nodes and not have to shift the entire, all the elements in the array uh, to uh, fit in your uh, incoming element. So that is an advantage of linked list, using a linked list where you have like a lot of insertions and deletions in your uh, algorithm or in your program. So that's about a linked list and array difference. Uh, yeah, this is just a diagram to demonstrate that. Um, this is the insertion part that we just talked about where you have to, the first one shows in an array, you have to, you really have to move elements if you want to insert Y, let's say, at the second position. But for a linked list, however, uh, if you want to insert Y at the second position, you are just changing two pointers here. One is for X1 and one is for Y. So that is the adjustment that you make. So linked list here has an advantage over an array. So yeah, that is the difference. Um, that's the difference. Um, 
we shall move on to hash table unless anyone has any other questions regarding linked list and arrays. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, can you please show the um, the first one you can you can show not the last one with the operation but the first uh, the one before when you show the difference between linked list and array okay um, the one pre the previous one okay this one thank you okay. okay so did you uh did you have a question on that so this is just uh just to Oh, I just want to see. Honestly, I'm um, I'm uh, really visual, and I okay. have a little bit of difficulty, so I really need to have a look. That's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So it, it let's give you an idea of uh, the array. Yeah. And this is exactly why accessing arrays by index costs you constant memory because you have a type uh, of elements in your array. And then you just shift in memory, you just multiply uh, the size of the element by index and you, you just shift and that's it. But it requires you to have a contiguous piece of uh, memory, which leads to fragmentation and you can't really allocate huge arrays in memory. So while it's beneficial in some uh, situations, it's not in others. Great explanation, thank you. It was really useful. Okay, okay. Uh, so shall we move on to hash tables then? Uh, okay, so hash tables um, store data as key value pairs and it will allow you to access the data by its key. So this is, uh, this structure is most commonly used for lookups for it is this provides really fast uh, uh, speed for lookups. So, um, <clears throat> and also for uh, searching, um, for inserting, for deleting objects, yeah. Hash tables are uh, by far uh, the most convenient data structure. Uh, only thing, it does not maintain an order uh, and uh, uh, it stores everything as a key value pair. So uh, this is kind of the uh, way it things would look like in a hash table. So we have like three keys, Martha, Jake, and Paul, and we have the value as software developer, QA tester, and data scientist. So it maps everything. So our data here is actually the sphere. So whenever I want to access uh, the data, I would just query by the key that I put in. So my hash table, it could be something like hash table querying for Marta and it will return you software developer as the output. Now why hash tables are so fast and how do they store all of this is by the concept of hashing. Uh, hashing is where you use the hash function on the key that you are entering or on the key that you want to store in the hash table. And the hash function essentially generates a code, which is kind of an index where it puts in the key value pair. Um, and whenever you want to, again, retrieve that particular, um, retrieve that particular data again, it would compute the uh, hash of that key that you have entered and it would immediately find the index where it was stored. So this entire, um, this entire concept makes it um, a suitable data structure for any kind of lookups, for uh, speedy lookups uh, that you want. So, uh, so yeah, that is uh, hashing. And yeah, in Python, uh, well in Java you have hash map, that is the data structure that is used in Java to store uh, um, uh, things in a hash table. Uh, but in uh, Python, I we use a dictionary here. So the dictionary here is decla declared as you can see in the first part where you have a name that is name is the key and Zara is the value. 
age seven class first. So those are the three uh, pairs that we are storing in the dictionary. And when we want to access the elements in the dictionary, so we do a dict of name, we do a dict of age, and similarly a dict of class would return you first. So that is how it looks uh, like in Python. Uh, Helen, do you have anything to add to a dictionary uh, here in the snippet? Uh, yeah, there, for, there was a question. Uh, can the bucket have more than one value? So this question can be interpreted in two ways. Uh, way number one, uh, you can have, a, for instance, a list as a value or another structure as a value. It's it's not necessarily like one-to-one -one mapping string to string or like integer to string or whatever. You can put a complex data structure in there. But also another way to interpret this question is uh, there, there is such a thing as uh, hash collisions. Basically, if uh, multiple keys, uh, the hash function for those multiple keys, it produces the same result, hash result. If your hash, uh, if your hash function isn't good enough or you don't have enough buckets, you have collisions which have to be resolved separately. And this is a separate topic. Please stay tuned and join our next uh, sessions. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, Ellen. Uh, the question was from me about uh, the bucket, including so. Uh, I can expand on that. <clears throat> My question was for one key, for example, can you have New York and also some maybe other values uh, like integer or maybe another dictionary inside that? The reason I'm asking that is because, you know, there are nested dictionaries where you can have an, um, a key value pair, but your value can be also a dictionary. Did, did, was I clear? Uh, yeah, that's what I meant by complex data structures that you put into value. Okay. You can, you can totally like yeah. you can totally do what you want. The only question is, is it efficient? If it is, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, also just to add on to that, so essentially yes, it deals with complex data structures. But here, not necessarily that my value can be just a single integer or a character. You could also have, you know, a, a list and a, a list as your value. So basically, New York could have values as list of elements uh, that you want. Uh, it could be any other complicated data structure that you might want to create and use. So it all depends on the use case that you have. The only thing, the key cannot be duplicate. Uh, you, you can have only a single key here. And the mapping, the value which you want could be a nested data structure as well, if that is what uh, you were looking for. Thank you. Okay. So, so okay, let's move on. So that is again a snippet uh, of a dictionary, how a dictionary looks like in Python. And this one is, um, if we want to, this adds a new entry to an already existing dictionary called school. And the key, uh, the value is DTS school. So when you try to print that, you get uh, the value as uh, what we entered. So that is all about a uh, dictionary. Um, okay, moving on uh, to, uh, uh, to trees. Uh, now trees again is another uh, nonlinear data structure. It is a hierarchical data structure. It, ha it is made of something called edges and nodes. Now, as we move on to, to, the, uh, to the further slides in the presentation, we will see that tree is actually a kind of a graph. But for now, let's just keep it simple and uh, look at what we have in the diagram. So a tree would look like this. It would have edges. It would have nodes connected via all the edges. Now, there are different types of tree. We have binary tree, binary search tree, B trees, AVL trees, red black trees, just to name a few. But we will keep uh, the scope of today's talk to be binary tree, just because as we 
a deep dive into trees, they would know the how complex these data structures are, the different kinds of trees, and there are different specific operations based on the kind of trees that you're using. So a tree would essentially look like this. You would have uh, uh, the top node, which is called root. In this example, that is A. And it would have something called as children nodes, uh, which essentially branch out from the nodes. And um, they could be even further branched into various levels. And uh, um, we, um, we would have something called a leaf node. Uh, and a leaf node is something which does not have any further branches. Uh, so that is like the end node. And typically uh, for a binary tree, you would, have, um, you would have a representation like a root node, a left child and a right child. So every node either has a left child or a right child or does not have uh, any of them. So a leaf node is something which does not have a left child or a right child at all. And the tree, as you can see, can be further branched out to uh, into for, uh, smaller subtrees and, uh, and so on. You could have different levels in a binary tree and as we cover or as we delve into tree in depth, we will see how we can uh, access nodes at various levels, how we can access like traverse the trees, um, all the nodes in the trees, how we can determine whether a leaf node has been reached or not, or how to find like the length of a path which starts from a root and ends at the leaf. So there are different kinds of things uh, and algorithms around trees which we will um, cover in our later sessions. But this is just how a tree would look like, a binary tree would look like. Uh, so this is, um, this is a, a very basic um, example snippet on the tree. So on a binary tree specifically, so you have, you are declaring a tree as, um, Self dot left is none, so it's that's that's the basic tree. You have a data, and the left and right nodes are not pointing to anything. And as you insert uh, into the tree, you will be um, comparing. You will be adding to its left and uh, right children. So that is what this particular sorry, that's what this particular uh, code does. Uh, if the data, and this one specifically um, just puts an order in how we enter uh, data into the tree, it compares the incoming node with the uh, parent, with the root, and it sees if that data is less, um, if the data's value is less than the uh, root data, it adds it as a left child, otherwise it goes and adds it as a right child. Um, so that is, um, that's, that's how you would print a tree. Uh, you need to go and traverse the left, uh, uh subtree and the right subtree of the main tree and keep on printing all the data in that. So, so a lot of the tree algorithms would, uh, a binary tree algorithms would involve recursion but but also you could solve them using um, iteratively using queues and stacks. So that is one um, application that we will see in tree traversal in our future sessions. But uh, this is something that uh, essentially shows you how to instantiate the tree and how we insert data and then we print the print out the data. So that is it about a tree. Um, okay, again, heap is uh, a very specific application of a heap uh, of a tree. We have something called a min heap and a max heap. So in a max heap, um, the node at the top, the root node, is greater is the uh, largest value among all the nodes in that particular uh, tree. And in a min heap, 
the root node is the smallest value among all the other nodes uh, in that particular tree. And uh, there are a lot of um, heap algorithms as well. So heap is a very specific application. Uh, how the heap, how do you insert data into a heap? How do you delete data from a heap? And uh, what happens if let's say for a max heap here, for example, an incoming node has uh, data which is larger than my maximum value. There will be, again, heap uh, reinsertions and reorganizations inside the heap. All of those algorithms are a bit complex to deal with today, so we will look at them in our uh, later uh, sections. But yeah, this is how a heap, uh, an application of a tree would look like for a heap. Um, graph is um, a complicated data structure, um, a data structure which is very, of course, very commonly used in different kinds of uh, social media networks to build a network and for graph searching, etc. So you use graphs. Um, these are nothing but a collection of nodes and edges again. Uh, so tree is essentially a graph, but it does not have cycles. A graph could have loops. It can be directed. It can be undirected. And um, it can be uh, connected in like, uh, so directed means it can be connected in one direction, undirected meaning it will be connected in all directions. Uh, in both directions, it could have loops inside. So graph traversal algorithms and graph search algorithms are um, a part of our later discussions. Um, but yeah, this is also a kind of uh, nonlinear data structure that uh, we do use. So that's it about a graph and um, that brings us to all the different kinds of data structures that we have uh, covered until now and which are by far some of the most common data structures that you would encounter in your probably daily programming or in your uh, preparations for interviews. Now, you have different data structures, but how do you like choose what is the optimal data structure that you would be using for your uh, algorithm. Uh, this is um, a very simple graph which might help you um, deal with that kind of a decision. So let's say uh, I have, um, now we saw that we have two kinds of orders, ordering uh, for stacks and queues. We have a LIFO or FIFO. So we start and let's say we have many data items and if our ordering is important, uh, if we see that, okay, uh, it is uh, a first in, first out kind of problem, then we might use a queue or we might want to use a queue. But if it is a last in first out kind of problem, you might want to use a stack. It all depends on the problem that you're facing. Um, let's say you have your data is kind of your order is important and um, ordering is important and um, then you look at okay do I know the list of elements that I need to add uh, if you do know the number of elements uh, you might want to use an array but if you do not know the number of elements if your uh, data structure needs to just grow in size uh, you might want to use a list. Um, uh, so, so that is that is the kind of uh, design uh, thinking and the problem thinking that you might want to do before deciding what is the kind of data structure that will help me meet my goal for the problem. So, so yeah, and th these are the very basic ones. As we deep dive, we will get to also know, uh, look at the applications of when to use a tree, when to use a graph, and so on. So, yeah, that is, okay, so that brings us uh, to the end of the basics of data structures. Um, 
we have some we have uh, many a times we have uh, things like time complexity and space complexity and things like that asked uh, during your uh, when you are trying to uh, when trying to measure the performance of your algorithm so the performance of the algorithm or the complexity of the algorithm is something that we measure uh, by bigo notation um time complexity essentially deals with the uh, execution time that is required for your algorithm and space complexity would deal with the amount of space that your algorithm uses um so yeah uh, and both of them are actually defined as a function of an input size input size would be okay what is the size uh, that my algorithm is going to actually work on is it uh, going to work with 10 elements is it going to work with 100 elements is it going to work with 100000 elements and things like that so basically based on the input size uh, the running time of my algorithm would differ so that is measured using a big o notation uh, and it looks like um uh, Okay, so it looks like something like this: uh, order of and o of, and then in the bracket you have either n or log n or one. We will come to that later. Uh, but um, let me just yeah, let me just go through an example uh, of how uh, this is a very simple example, but of course we will be dealing with more complicated ones. So let's say I uh, have one print statement uh, which says this code is to demonstrate so and so, and it runs when I run it. It runs in one millisecond. Now, when I have like a for loop uh, printing that statement in let's say ten times or hundred times, the time would uh, increase uh, to one into n number of times the statement is printing. so that is a difference in how the complex the time complexity or the run time of a particular algorithm that you have written might increase based on your uh, based on the number of input that you are providing so we measure that and that is a very important factor while writing an algorithm you wouldn't want your uh, algorithm to run for an infinite time so and they could be measured different kinds of algorithms would have different kinds of complexity a constant complexity algorithm is the one that remain that takes the same amount of time or space regardless the, uh, of the input size uh you could have logarithmic complexity log n you could have a linear complexity you could also have complexity like o order of n to the power 2 or 3 or 4 based on all of the variables based on all of the data structure and based on the logic that you are using to code out your program so that is how it is represented uh space complexity also represented by a uh, similar uh, notation and it is the total amount of space that is the memory that is used for um evaluating your algorithms uh, execution so um yeah this is a very uh simple example to show that this particular array that takes um order of n space because there are n elements in the array so you store them at n locations so yeah and this is kind of a cheat sheet well as we we, we no one memorizes this so no one knows everything on this as we go on uh to implementing various problems in our data structures you would know more about this um and yeah these we have some basic applications here um for our different data structures and as you can see cube stack for uh stack for temporary storage cube for job scheduling is what we discussed tree is a used for 
implementing various hierarchical structures in computer st uh, systems and hash table, as we said, it's hash table is also because of the concept of hashing, many cryptography algorithms use uh, this pattern. So, so yeah, and yeah, that is, that brings us to the end of presentation. We are, yeah, we are, uh, we also have some workshop plan for you. So yeah, we'll end it here. And if anyone has any questions at this point, uh, please feel free to ask. Okay, I see the chat now. Or we can just move in to our workshop questions. Uh, we have very basic workshop questions for today because we know that we haven't deep typed into everything. We have very simple ones uh, designed for you. And, but also before that, we have a very small quiz, um, the link for which I will be sharing. Okay, shall we just... Um, Shall I just paste this link in chat? So the presentation part of our event today is finished. I'm stopping the recording because after that, we are going to practice whatever we have learned today. So thank you for watching us.